Okay, welcome to Friday, and this week we are talking about gelatin. So, Friday, Jean, so cheers to you, it's the weekend. All right, so just like latex, I'm going to try and make this one a short one because I know the latex one was really long, but um, gelatin's just like latex. It has so many uses, and to be honest, uh, it's probably going to be a long one. <laughs> so gelatin, and the gelatin that I am talking about is the gelatin that you go to the grocery store and you see jello you know with a uh, cherry flavor and everything way up on the top shelf will be a unflavored clear gelatin called Knox and all all the supermarkets that I've been into have their own brand so you don't have to get that brand but the important thing is that it is clear and unflavored so that's the gelatin I'm talking about. Um, I'm not going to show pro gelatin here just because I want to make this accessible to everybody. So gelatin is fantastic for making really quick uh, special effects, burns, open wounds, scars. Uh, you can use it with molds. You can mold it onto your skin. Uh, it just there's so many uses for, for it. It's so uh, easy to use. Um, and it is very cheap to make. And if you don't put like blood all over it, it is reusable. So unlike latex. So <laughs> uh, what else can I say? It, it's easy to make. Um, once you know where to find things. So let's go over the pros first. Okay, so the pros of gelatin is it is easy to use for beginners. It, it's beginner friendly. Um, there's not much you can screw up with gelatin other than um, one of the cons, and we'll get to that later, but I will say the only con really is that you can burn yourself for others. So keep that in mind. It is reusable. If you do not put blood and other things like that, you can color it with foundation, um, but it will uh, not last as long because makeup is not meant to be reheated and reheated and reheated and reheated. Um, so it will make the life of the gelatin uh, lessen quite a bit. Um, it is easy to remove. Um, I've had a couple gelatin pieces where you can do it right on the skin without adhesive and will it last for hours and hours and hours? Uh, no, uh, but it will stay there without adhesive for quite a little bit of time. So if you're gentle with it, um, you could just turn the shower on to hot, jump in the shower and no remover is required. So, and because gelatin dissolves in water, you're in the shower, you're in the bath, it's, it's easy to remove. Um, so, unlike latex, you can actually get this into your hair and use that for special effects. Again, it comes out easy in the shower. It creates textures really easy by itself and the drying stages. Um, unlike latex where you have to manipulate it. Um, you can come up with some really amazing textures just with, you know, the gelatin itself. And that's knowing the drying stages and when to pull and all these things. Um, so it is cheaper than latex. Um, and very comfortable to wear. Uh, unless you're wearing a really large and thick prosthetic, um, which would make the plants very heavy and more so than latex, um, this is very comfortable. Once it kind of warms up to your skin, you kind of forget it's there. So 
it really does kind of feel like a second skin when you have it on. Um, you can use these in molds with texture pads and I will show all those and those techniques as we go along. And um, I just want to mention some cons that the gelatin does have. And that is when you are working with it and when it is wet, it smells horrible. All right. Um, if you've ever been on a New York subway, you will know what this will smell like. Okay. Um, hi to all my New Yorkers out there. Um, anyway, it has a short working time uh, because when it starts to cool down is when it starts to dry and it happens quite quickly. So it dries fast and it has a short working time. As I said, you can burn yourself or others very easy. So always, always do a little test on yourself before you even work on anybody else and make sure that you don't put boiling gelatin onto somebody else. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but there's warning labels for a reason, right? So another con is it melts in heat with sweat. It comes off with water. It it dissolves. So if you are wearing a prosthetic, you did it, you didn't do anything to it, you went outside and you're in downpour, it's, it's going to come off. Uh, so that's the downfall to really um, gelatin. But aside from that, um, gosh, let me go over some of the things that you guys will need in order to work with gelatin. Okay, so you will need a microwave, but you can do this with a stovetop. So if you don't have a microwave, do this over the stovetop. All right, so you need hot water, mixing cups, popsicle stick, or I'm using spatulas. I went over this in my basic series. I use these for everything. Beauty, special effects, I can't tell you how much. I use these a lot. Um, so you'll need a sealer. If you want to color this, some type of cosmetic, uh, whether it be foundation or concealer or pigment, powder. Um, and to get started, I will literally show you everything and tell you where you can find these at. So, a uh, couple supplies that you will need. Um, I do this in a standard mixing cup with a whisk. I already measured my water out, and I will leave the recipe down below. You will need water, glycerin. Okay, sorry, I thought someone just drove in. Glycerin. And this comes in all different forms. This I got at Walmart. This I got at the craft store. Right now, this has been really hard to find, um, but you find this in the first aid section by all the skincare, and it is called glycerin. So, okay, hold on. I think someone just drove in. So we're gonna continue. So glycerin, is found in the first aid aisle by all the skin protectant stuff and it's normally on the bottom shelf. Um, it's a really syrupy um, liquid uh, but again if you can't find this at a Walgreens, a Rite Aid, I get it at almost any super um, uh, market or grocery store, uh, pharmacy, you'll find it in that aisle. I got this one at Walmart. Uh, this one I got, and this one runs about five bucks for six fluid ounces. For our friends, that is 177 milliliters. All right. Um, this is how many? This is eight fluid ounces, and this was seven bucks. So um, not that bad. This is actually found in, so if you can't find it in like Walgreens or whatever, 
Um, this you get into the craft section by all of the soap making supplies. Um, you'll find it there. Normally it's in bigger quantities um, due to uh, people put this in soap. You will need unflavored gelatin. Oops. Unflavored gelatin. All right. Uh, this is clear, unflavored. This is not cherry. This is not grape. All right. I realize, can we just. I'm short. I'm sorry. That light is just going to be there. I apologize ahead of time. Pretend I'm an angel. I don't know what to tell you. So, unflavored gelatin, for my recipe, um, this has four sachets or envelopes, whatever you want to call them. Um, this says a one ounce package or 28 grams for our friends there. And I used both of these, okay, which is about, works out to about a half cup, U.S. half cup, um, which is a 118 milliliters okay so unflavored gelatin um we're gonna need let's move those out of the way we don't need those right now we will need some sealer i'm using final seal powder uh translucent powder and witch hazel witch hazel actually is what's going to blend your gelatin into your skin. This again can be found um, by the first aid pharmacy stuff for the skin, uh, witch hazel. You can find that pretty much in any drug mark, you know, drug pharmacy and grocery store. I have Wax paper. I would use professional release paper, but I'm trying to make this accessible for everybody, so wax paper. Okay, so let's talk about it. I already have had, I got hot water in here. It's three, uh, I again, uh, ratio one to one part glycerin and gelatin and then it is 1.5 points of, of, of water to that so I start out with hot water add the gelatin I whisk as I'm adding it so there's not any big lumps now the reason why I whisk this all in before I put it in the microwave if you just dump this in and then um, decide, oh, I'm going to put it in the microwave. You're going to cook that gelatin uh, in powder form. will actually liquidize, and then it will do big chunks that won't actually re-dissolve back into this liquid. So that was a half cup. So we're doing the same amount of glycerin, which is going to be about... Mm, a little more than half of this. Now, the reason why I'm using this this particular ratio, oh, another thing, ice cube trays, um, is it will actually fill ice cube tray. So, and I know this because I've done this recipe before. So, if I know I need, and this one little tray, these are stacked, um, but this one little tray will get you so many applications of gelatin okay so glycerin so then it's looking like a hot mess you guys okay it's nasty it's gross but try and get the gelatin to just play nice where there's not a lot of chunks in it now it's gonna look funky because the gelatin is wet now when you put this into the microwave i show you what it looks like. It's really nasty, chunky. Not chunky, but it'll look like a bunch of fat. Okay. And essentially it is. So you're going to take this 
in little increments, 30 second increments in the microwave. And each time you wanna whisk it a little bit so that it's dissolving with the heat, okay? You do not want to boil this. Um, what your goal is, you want this to look clear um, and you do not wanna see graininess anymore. So that is your end goal. So everyone's microwave is different. <laughs> and if you're using a stove top, that's gonna to be different. So I'm gonna go and heat mine up. Um, I will show you it through stages, but I just wanna let you guys know. Um, 30 seconds, stir it, 30 seconds until it's not grainy and until it is clear. It's, again, it's gonna smell like diapers, but you know, it, it, that's just how it is. First round, this is what it looks like. Okay, it's a lot runnier, it's not, but it's still grainy and has a lot of bubbles, looks a little foamy, because if you really whisk it, it's you can whisk this and literally turn it into chunks as it dries. We don't want that. Um, it's not clear enough yet, so I'm gonna throw it back in for another 30 seconds. All right. Okay, so when you can take a spoon Here's the gelatin. Coat the back. And when the bubbles run off and it's clear, see how it's really clear there? That's what you want your gelatin to look like. All right, it's gonna be foamy. That's the nature of real gelatin that's not colored. But if you can see how clear it is on the spoon, that's what you want. You want it to be clear. Okay, so I'm gonna go put these into a tray. Okay, so this is what you can choose to do. All right, I'm gonna be using a ice cube tray. You can get these anywhere. I got these at the dollar store. And I'm gonna pour all my gelatin into here, making it a lot easier. You can just dump this all into a uh, little container with a lid and call it good and then if you're going somewhere you can have that you don't have to you know it's microwavable you don't have to worry about that but um i do especially during um zombie run uh, i do a lot of gelatin for aesthetics and so i will use this method where i have these guys um and i can just pop a you know a portion out of it out and quickly make one so that's what I do, so that's what I'm gonna do, and then I'll show you some other techniques with gelatin, all right? Oops. Now, if you want to add um, a flesh tone. This is where I'd say add some foundation before you put it into the cubes and let it melt into the gelatin to get the color that you want. And then you can also do, I'll show you here, I did several different colors, but if you don't, you just want to do clear, here you go. This is what you do to make it easy to do little portion sizes of gelatin. And this recipe is just enough to fill one tray. And again, it's going to look a little foamy on top. And that is the last one. All right, so all of our gelatin is poured in. This is going to set. Um, it's going to take it a while to cool down, but we'll come back to this later. Okay, so we are back. Here is some gelatin that I have made previously. This is gelatin that I just have reused and didn't put it back into the cubes because um, you can reuse it many times. 
This is what the clear gelatin will look like. Now it will go on clear, um, but it will look like this, this color. This has no um, pigment in it. This one has some pigment in it, some foundation in it. This one I colored with a cream, uh, a cream wheel, and I did this white for bone. And then I did a muscle color. All right. So uh, the imagination is endless here. You can color gelatin. It works really, really well. Um, and this is what it looks like when they are solid. Ooh. Let's... Oh, okay. So I'm going to take this gelatin and start to put some on my hand. And you want to work on your edging right away because this does will start to gel really quick. And you want a thin layer. You don't. It's more believable when you have a thin layer. See, this is already starting to gel. So that's why I say work on your edges first. All right. So when you're using little cubes, it's not going to take you 30 seconds. Uh, do it more in like five or six second bursts, all right? Um, or you will get burnt. So let's see if I can do this because I've given up on that camera. Um, I ran out of memory, so we're just going to do this from a laptop. Sorry, guys. I know that images are better from there, but I can't be bothered to go and get another SD card. So we're going to put some of this on my skin. Make sure you have tested it because I got old gelatin still there. Sorry. There we go. All right. Now. When you do this, um, you want to do thin layers. And the reason why is, um, unless you've had like a really massive wound and it's literally pushed up skin or exit wound, not a lot of wounds have huge raises in them, right? So we'll put some on the skin and I'm going to do it in really thin. I'm going to start working my edges right away because it's not going to take that long. Once it hits my skin, it's not going to take that long for it to start to gel up. Okay, let's do some gelatin on the skin. Okay. Can you guys see that? There we go. Now, instantly, I'm going to start working on some edging here. Pull it out, make it thin. So you really can't see an edge on it. So that really is key. Maybe take some away. Now, right now you can see it's starting to actually gel up now and I'll show you how you can tell. Uh, you'll start to get stringy bits. Now this, if you wanna do a burn right now would be a great point to start to lift up on it and it will create all these textures, okay? Um, and it will do that. Now I'm going to start to do some cuts and slashes. Um, you can see it's really I like drag that because it has a really cool point to it and come up with some really cool designs. Now you can take gelatin and add to it if you want. And a good way to make stringy bits when it's starting to get jelly like this, you take it, drop it, drag it, it creates these funky little strings. See that? And this looks really cool on the mouth. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry. And this is method one, just putting this on and doing some cuts. I can add some more if I want it to be more lumpy and 
but because it's really gelling, if you do this and um, inconsistent patterns, it will create a chunky burn look and it will make little pock marks like this and uneven skin textures. All right, so there's one way of using gelatin. Okay, so I'm powdering the first wound that we did. This is where you start to see all the powder. Woo! The magic of makeup. All right. Edges weren't so. Okay. There we go. And can you see that? Am I totally white out? See the cool texture on the skin? This is from that texture pad. It's totally not dry right now, but it looks like a bunch of fatty tissue. So this is a great way for like zombie skin and, and burns and some cuts. Okay, I'm gonna use this. And um, what I'm going to do is take this, take some of petroleum jelly, and I don't have to do this, it just comes out easier because this is silicone, but it's just a lot easier when you release a mold. Um, you know, they don't get as dirty. So if you do this, a lot more detail comes out. Good, you don't need a lot. Okay, and we take some gelatin that we've warmed up from our cubes. Put it into the mold. Okay. We take part of your, I should have done this, but the uh, wax paper. And again, I do this because it's easier Take this, put that on top. I just take something long. This is starting to gel. And rotate. And what you're doing is pushing all that gelatin all over the mold. Then you have a prosthetic. Now I'm gonna throw this in the fridge just to speed it up its drying time. So that's how you create a prosthetic and any mold will work. Um, I have this one. I have plaster ones I've made. I have <clears throat> one from Bitty Mold. This one's my favorite. I wore this one for a zombie run last year and it freaked a lot of people out because there's bone. Um, so that's how you use gelatin out of a mold and I will come back and actually peel up the mold and show you guys how to do that. So this is one technique to use gelatin. Okay, so here's our mold. I'm just going to peel on up. And because we released it, it's going to peel up really well. extra. And there is an awesome gelatin prosthetic. Let me powder it because powdering gelatin actually brings out a lot of the detail in um, a prosthetic. So let me put a powder, not a lot. Here's the extra, we're gonna pull that extra off. But now you have a gelatin prosthetic. So we have a gelatin prosthetic out of a mold. So that's how you do this. 
Okay, here is a stencil I have, and I am putting gelatin as it is gelling. Through the stencil. Okay, now I'm gonna let that dry first. It's still really warm, and I'm gonna peel it up, and then there's gonna be some texture. I don't know if you can see that stencil. Come on, there we go. So I'm gonna let this dry, and then I'm gonna peel it up, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. So I hope you guys can see the texture that is there. Now that texture, that lizard texture is on my skin using a stencil. So you can make some really cool, like say you have a witch and you want to make a symbol on the witch, a hand or whatever, this is a good way to do that is with a stencil, put the stencil down and um, you do have to pull the stencil up when it's like semi drying, but still wet. So there is some, there you go. There you can see the textures now. That's from a stencil. Okay, again, I'm going to release a little piece of wax paper. And um, now if you have a countertop that you can put gelatin directly on, do that, or a cutting board, syringe. Make sure it's cleared. And we are going to put some of the gelatin into the syringe. Let it drip out. Depending on how much pressure you apply. This is a good way to make fatty tissue to add to your latex things. Um, to make some boils. If you wait for it to gel a little bit, cool off a little bit, you could really get some raised. Now remember, blisters are irregular. They're not completely round, right? This is a good way, or if you want to make a good, really cool scar, you can syringe something out and start to sculpt it like that. So let's say you want to make a really cool scar, you can syringe one out. All right, so this is a good way to make different textures. There you go. You can make a scar. A raised scar out of that. Now I'm going to put this in hot water so that um, the tip of the gelatin will uh, melt out and it will be clean. But this is how you make blisters that you want to maybe it's an outbreak maybe whatever but um, you'll see even our little scar here On this side, that's a good way to make fatty tissue, blisters, um, all of that. So that's how you do this technique. Then you just peel them off, put a little bit more gelatin on it, and put it on your skin. So um, some other tips with gelatin is that you really do need to seal it. Um, it does absorb what it, what it takes. So whether you put makeup on it, the gelatin actually will absorb it the color and it will bleed throughout the prosthetic or where the gelatin is. So this is why I take the gelatin and whatever piece I have, I'll seal that with final seal or barrier spray, whatever I have to seal. Um, there's several different things that I'll list down below that seal the gelatin appliance and then I do the makeup in order for it to stay and not bleed all over into the prosthetic where I don't want it. So that's why you sell, seal a gelatin um, appliance and or whatever you're working on. Because then you'll find if you're shooting a film progressively, the wound is all turning red from the blood. Or, um, you know, let's say you use green and it's progressively spreading like a disease. This could work, you know, um, but maybe that's not what you're going for. So you do want to seal the gelatin uh, when you're doing makeup.
Okay, here's some tips with working with a gelatin, especially if you're on set and because it has such a um, fast working time. If you take and go and get, you can get these at Bed Bath & Beyond, I've seen them at Walmart, it is a coffee cup warmer or even a potpourri, a potpourri uh, warmer. This keeps the gelatin warm. Um, you do have to babysit it because it can get really hot. If you leave it on and forget about it, you really will burn somebody. But um, a good way to do this too, if you're, you know, you fill it about mm, one third of the way with water and do it as a, put a pint jar uh, on it and use it as a double boiler method. Um, that's a good way to do it on set. Um, you can make gel blood out of gelatin. You can make tears that stay on the face. Um, especially if you get a um, syringe and wait for it to gel and then you push it out and then you have you can have some f really cool fake tears on the face um, using the syringe method method again you could actually make some really amazing scars um, on the skin um, always 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 work on your edges fast because it does have such a fast working time always work on the edges first and then get to you know carving out a wound um so i think those are all that i can think of right now so let's get into playing with some gelatin okay so the tip i used was this guy Mr. Coffee Mug Warmer. You see how it's sitting lying there? You put a little jar on it, you got some gelatin that's warmed up. Um, but again, be careful. If you leave this on, forget about it. it. The gelatin will get so hot you will burn yourself. All right? Tip right there. Potpourri warmers, I think, are the same thing. This was like nine bucks. Okay, gelatin. And again, now I'm going to test this against, if you can feel the heat against your, your wrist, it's too hot. Now, let's get some gelatin and work on edges immediately. I'm going to get some more gelatin because that's just kind of what we're going to do. Okay. Work around your edges because right now it's already kind of starting to gel. So you want to pull those edges out. Um, and then as it's starting to gel, okay, so work on the edges. You can start to lift up. See how it's doing stringy things. Um, this will leave like burned skin. So you'll create all these different textures. All right, so no rhyme or reason, just as it's gelling, just start to pick up some skin. And that will give you like the Freddy Cougar look, you know. Um, and also we're gonna do some cuts. You can always add more gelatin to it. So let's say I want a little more burn here. I'm gonna do a cut here. So let's do actually a good cut right here. And this is really starting to gel, so this is really going to take some work. Let's do that. I know it looks like I'm scraping my skin. I'm not. I'm not harming myself. This is not a self-harming video. Okay? You don't condone that here. Alright. Alright. 
So you see I'm a little, I was already pink there to begin with. So it doesn't look like much now. All right. And I just want to note too, if you, when it's at this gelling stage and you got the stringy stuff right here, that is amazing around the mouth to do like long stringy bits like this. Oh, that makes for some really great, you can take the gelatin and pull it on itself. You can open up a wound. Let's do that. Make some holes in the skin. So there you got a really great, and then over here we got a really cool, whoops, really cool cut right there. All right. Okay, so this is what the gelatin looks like with no makeup. You can see the texture. Close up with a burn bit. You can see that. Zoom out. There we go. See the cuts and the burns. So I'm going to um, blend the edges out. Now, don't go and buy gelatin blender and pay 20 bucks for it. Um, let me tell you a little secret. Um, all gelatin blender is, is witch hazel. That's all it is. Um, so, now you know. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to get some a brush and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a little uh, witch hazel here. And see how that has some edges right here? I'm going to, no, gelatin, you can blend it out if you don't have really really thick edges but let's start on the bottom here so you don't you just take it and go down and see how it's really blending that out see how it blended that edge out now again for thicker things it's not going to do as well but it still will work. Do this thick guy here. And if you do it too much, then you're going to create more of an edge. But this is how you thin edges with gelatin. So yeah, we got some really big bumps here. Just take the witch hazel and make them go away. Now those edges aren't so harsh anymore, but I still have the texture of that burn area. So we're going to do this. Now I got in a weird area right there, right here in my little knuckle area. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, so I'm going to kind of leave that so it kind of stays. If you mess with that, it's going to come up. We're just going to go around the edges. Good job. And it will smooth some things out. See how I have a big chunk right here? Let's just smooth him down a little bit. There. See how I made him less chunky? Alright, so that is blending gelatin. Now, let's brush to the side. Now I'm going to give this a little powder. Um, gelatin is a bit sticky, so you're going to have to powder it, <clears throat> but um, this is a good starting point. we got some cuts and we got some burns, and even without makeup, if you look at it, it looks really nasty. So 
let's give it a little powder. Um, need a powder brush. That would be great. And make sure the hand is dry. And mine isn't yet, so I'm going to wait till it's dry and then I will powder it. So we're going to give this a little powder. Is it quite sticky? So if you use too much um, witch hazel, um, it will get sticky. Okay, we'll see. So it becomes matte. Got a little hair there. It's not as shiny. Now it's really kind of starting to look like some skin. Right? So, this is what it looks like powdered. You can really see the texture of the burn. You can really start to see that cut there. Okay, so I threw on a little little makeup here, um, just to give you an idea of what the burn can look like. And um, I can't be bothered to go get a cream makeup, but I'm going to use some eyeliner and make this look charred. So I'm just going to put some black areas on the skin, and I'll blend it out, um, but it will really make it look charred and like a really messed up burn. Um, So, this just gives you guys an idea. Okay. So you can see how it can really start to kind of come to life with little, little tweaks. So there's the burn part. We got some cuts there. Maybe I want to make the cut look a little deeper. Going in with a little more dark color in places. Not everywhere. Um, let's see how that just adds a little bit. And it doesn't take hardly any time. So there is... gelatin. And you can tell it looks very realistic. Um, now, unfortunately the footage got lost, but um, I used a sealer. I used Final Seal. There's green marble. I will list some other ones down below. And you want to seal this before you do this makeup. Otherwise, eventually it will all bleed and um, Especially if you put blood or anything like that onto gelatin, it absorbs it and it will turn the whole area around it, it will absorb it. So there is the application of gelatin. And this is not a tutorial for the makeup, but I thought I'd do some to show you guys really how it can really look. Let's get a close-up of that burn. And there's the cut. And again, you could further this by adding some blood. Um, so, again, uh, the wonders of gelatin. And you can see I'm moving my hand around. Let's get that out of the way. Really, really well. Um, the only area I'm going to have problems with is this area. Um, eventually it's going to come up. But if you look on the sides, you can hardly tell where it starts. 
and it's going to stay on for a good bit. You can hardly see those edges anymore there that we had pretty thick. So this can be a really fun thing and make some really amazing quick shots. Um, again, this isn't going to last a really long time without adhesive. Um, and you can prolong this by putting adhesive around the edges. Um, and then when you do gelatin prosthetics, you use an adhesive. And those will last for long periods of time. So hope you guys enjoyed this. And um, I will see you in the next one. Bye! Okay, so um, if you don't feel inclined to make your own gelatin or you just want to try a professional brand of gelatin, um, you can either get the professional powdered gelatin and make the gelatin um, with that in lieu of the store-bought, or you can actually buy, like I showed you, the ice cubes or blocks. Um, some of them just come in containers, but there are a bunch of different brands that make them, and I'll leave links down below, but a couple just for um, reference. Um, is bad, <laughs> bad gone evil. Uh, Nigel's makes their own. Um, uh, Titanic FX makeup spelled differently. Um, uh, M A E K up. Uh, that's how they spell it. Mud. There's several other companies, um, but most company it's like latex, where a lot of them will just have their own brand. So if you just look up pro gelatin powder or pro gelatin um, FX and it will bring up a lot of different companies so that is a, another way if you want to compare the two um, you can do it that way all right I will leave links down below in the box of knowledge um, for anything that I might have forgotten to mention and um, also, the same thing for latex, you can add textures into gelatin. Uh, you can, if you whip gelatin, as it's drying, it will come up with these little chunks, which is really good to make um, almost like a muscle tissue kind of a thing. Um, color it red and just start whipping it and whip it until it kind of dries and it will have these little chunks. You'll have these like chunky, meaty um, bits of gelatin. Um, you can put, you know, yarn in it. You can, you know, if you want to get really creative and want some veins in gelatin, but you don't want to harm anybody, um, a good thing to do is to take, um, not spaghetti noodles, what's the one below it? I think angel hair. And you put that into a blue water and it will absorb it and dye it. And then you put that in the gelatin, you know, underneath. And it really looks like veins underneath. You can do the yarn thing. You can add a lot of textures in with the gelatin. And the gelatin really does mix well with the latex. So a lot of the time when I make a prosthetic, I will mix the two. I'll have you know, latex and do all the textures and then put some pieces of gelatin in it. And uh, you'd be surprised at how, how much um, something starts to really look amazing when you mix all these different textures like latex and um, gelatin. So, um, hold my sleeve. <laughs> oh, okay, I could walk up with everybody from just that. Okay, so, again, uh, if you end up mixing um, a lot of the different textures, like the gelatin with the latex, you'll have a pretty realistic uh, looking wound, and it's because you have all these different textures, and instead of everything being the same, and that's what really kind of sells the realism. So, hope you guys enjoyed it.
All right, bye. Okay, so that is gelatin. And uh, as you can see, you can do a lot with gelatin that you can with latex. Um, and the thing that I didn't include here today because it is a more advanced technique is foaming <laughs> gelatin. Um, and I you know I had mentioned foaming latex. There is such a thing as foaming gelatin. So uh, it's a very versatile material and you can do a lot with it, whether it's making prosthetic, uh, making a wound straight onto your arm or leg or wherever and uh, as well as um, more advanced techniques in foaming. So that is gelatin. So that is gelatin and it's a fun product to work with. Now the difference of pro gelatin versus the grocery store. I think I'll probably end up getting this question. It's a lot stronger. It has a higher bloom content, um, making the prosthetic itself um, a better strength. Um, it will hold up more. Uh, you can, if you have them next to each other, you can feel the difference in texture. Uh, so. Is it that much difference? Um, it, it depends on what you're going for, uh, to, to be honest. Um, but as far as is there a huge difference? I think there's more difference in, you know, uh, good latex and bad latex versus, you know, food, you know, gelatin that you get at the store versus uh, professional gelatin. For prosthetics and special effects makeup so all right so I completely forgot to do an outro sorry guys um, I hope you all are doing well wherever you are in the world and I hope you guys play around with this and really have fun with it and tell me are you planning on playing around with this and trying to make some stuff and if so Sorry about that notification. <laughs> All right. And if you are planning on trying this, what do you plan on making and what do you make what are you planning on making it for? Um, I'd really like to hear and um, see what you guys create. All right. Uh, I will leave everything down below, recipe, uh, any links that I can think of to help you guys out. Um, I hope you guys are doing well and have a great weekend. Bye.